We came here to revere the statue of Don Chopin, to show that we'll unswervingly push forward, reform and opening up, and strive to achieve new progress, new breakthroughs, and new steps in boosting reform and opening up in the country's modernization drive. On December 7, 2012, Xi Jinping paid his first visit to Shenzhen in Guangdong province, the forefront of China's reform and opening up. He vowed, no stop in reform and no stop in opening up. GDP in Shenzhen is expected to hit 2.2 trillion yuan in 2017, increases 8.8% year-on-year, ranking as the third nationwide after Shanghai and Beijing. Shenzhen is now on the top of the Chinese Comprehensive Competitiveness Ranking and also the number one of the Chinese City Attractiveness Ranking. Thanks to China's reform and opening up, Shenzhen has developed from a small fishing village into a metropolis in over 30 years. After 1960, Deng Xiaoping was acutely aware that China was in a disastrous state. During the Great Leap Forward, the amount of grain produced per person had fallen below what it had been in 1957. The Chinese government was seeking a proper way to increase the whole country's wealth. After Deng Xiaoping and his reformist allies ousted the gain of four Maoist faction, economic reforms began. Deng Xiaoping visited Guangdong in 1977. In 1980, National People's Congress Standing Committee approved the establishment of Special Economic Zone Shenzhen. In 1982, Baowen County was re-established, though this time as a part of Shenzhen. In 1988, Shenzhen was given the rights of provincial-level economic administrations. In 1994, former Chinese President Jiang Zemin inspected Shenzhen, encouraged the city to enhance its innovative advantage and strive for further improvement. In 1996, Shenzhen was home to the Provisional Legislative Council and Provisional Executive Council of Hong Kong. In 1999, Shenzhen held the first China high-tech fair, establishing the city as a leader of high-tech industries in China, drawing businesses adventurers from all over the country. In 2000, the city set a goal of building innovation advantages to achieve modernization striving to maintain its superiority in creativity, opening up, industrial upgrading, and legal construction, and build Shenzhen into a model of socialism with Chinese characteristics. In 2007, Shenzhen's GDP with 676 billion yuan and its export value with 168 billion US dollars, placing it first among big and medium-sized cities in China for the 15th successive year. In 2010, the original Special Economic Zone's border control was cancelled, and the Shenzhen Special Economic Zone was expanded to the whole city. The area of Shenzhen's special economic zone thus increased from 396 square kilometers to 1,953 square kilometers. In 2015, President Xi Jinping held a conference to approve the establishment of Shoko Free Trade Zone. In 2017, Shenzhen ranked the 22nd in the new edition of the Global Financial Center's Index and ranked the third in the city's GDP quality ranking. However, the change was too huge that Shenzhen had to face numerous conflicts and compromises in economic, civil cultural, and political perspectives. Before the actual reform and opening up, crisis had already taken place. Due to the disparity between inland China and Hong Kong's living qualities, thousands of young people risked their lives to swim across the border. While other leaders suggested military force as a solution, Deng Xiaoping advocated the idea of enhancing inland Chinese policy. After launching reform and opening up, conflicts from aspects of politics and economy emerged. Not only conservative officials criticized trivial details like special economic zones' troublesome transportation of goods and lack of speedy development in high-tech industries, conflicts about benefit also arose between people who planned formative framework and local officials who wanted to exert more autonomy. However, the biggest conflict involved around political system. 
Some Western and Chinese critics accused Don for exerting capitalism merely without using its name, and other leaders were concerned about if reformative activities such as encouraging private enterprises and inviting foreign businesses would bring imperialists back to China. Meanwhile, opinions on orientation of economic development split into two mainstreams. One is Dunn's conception of accelerating development and embracing new ideas from the outside world. The other is planned economy and doubtful attitude towards opening up represented by Chen Wei. In fact, adjusting market system was indeed accompanied by issues from multiple perspectives. Plant supply system conflicted with demand of a rapidly increased population. Stocks were established in an improper way, which resulted in complaints, and discrepancy followed due to some people who got rich faster than the others. Even though the reform and opening up policy has caused some conflicts, it forces Shenzhen and its citizens to adjust to the rapid development. Since the Mount Adam blast in the Shoko, compromises followed in three different aspects, culture, politics, and economy. The predecessor of Shenzhen was Baoling County, which was founded over 1600 years ago. After the establishment of People's Republic of China, Baoling people made unremitting efforts to get rid of poverty and backwardness. However, the following ideological dominance of class struggle resulted in a serious economic recession. Baowan people were expecting a thorough reform and were ready for something new. Politically, Deng Xiaoping founded the Xinjia Special Economic Zone in 1980. In the same year, the government reformed the cadre and personal system. In 1984, they implanted the labor contract system. In the economic perspective, Xinjian initiated market regulation price system, applied price reform, and established stock exchange market. These efforts made Shenzhen a city with quick international, economic, and technological development. Furthermore, since the rural area in Shenzhen requested for urban construction, some districts such as Wuhu, Damisha, and Futian have become villages and city. Under this circumstance, economic development mode, construction, management, and ideology of peasants had to be changed. As it turned out, rural urbanization was actually the right path to follow. All in all, although conflicts take place during Xinjiang reform and opening up, Xinjiang government still tries its best to compromise on political system, coordinate with local residents and in inland cities. As a consequence, most of the compromises are quite successful, and they bring beneficial results. For example, on the basis of deepening reform, Shenzhen advances Shenzhen-Hong Kong cooperation and promotes regional integration of Pearl River Delta, which enhances the economic development of surrounding areas. Accordingly, to a great extent, these compromises prevent conflicts and deterioration from happening. In conclusion, all the remarkable achievements people made during reform and opening up proved to not only Shenzhen citizens, but also to the world that the sweat, struggle, adversity, and compromises this city had been through are more than worthwhile. Chinese 中西方这个文化思想冲突的交汇点上，深圳人呢，其实他也在找一种磨合点，他也有一种新旧思想文化的碰撞的一种，呃，犹豫啊、踌躇啊，嗯，毋庸毋庸讳言，包括香港的一些